I think that you put it on Mac just because of uh, the the way that they. It looks like they want to do five man, but it could be. Um, I think I'd rather see them take like yeah, like you're saying though the four puck and then get another uh, off laner here. What, what's so good about four puck? What, do, what does it do? I'm down with four puck. This well, you, st you still have all your spells, obviously. Uh, the silence is okay. nice this game. You you don't die to Spirit Breaker. And I think the big thing about four puck this game is that it's basically three puck because Chen can play six. Okay. That's the thing. That like, is true. That okay. I, I think that's the... Some extra space that's there. That's the factor, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I like that. I think we were saying four puck not because we're like, we love the pick, but because it's exciting to see four puck yeah. also. Well, that's still be good. fair. Just yeah. Gives them and Puck just has the ability to cut waves in places that almost no other hero is capable of, yeah. of doing. Just being a, a real nuisance, applying pressure everywhere. Mm. And the the Dream Cold catch is really annoying for Spirit Breaker and Timbersaw. That's that's real frustrating. Morphling ban. Is it, hasn't Mac played against Lena like four times with Death Prophet or something? <laughs> uh, like I feel like this maybe. matchup pretty much the go-to matchup, right? Because yeah. you're not gonna pick any of these like storms or anything for the yeah. most part. I, I don't know if I like picking the Lena into the Wraith King puck though. Like that hero just s suffers so much if there's anyone that can get on top of you. It, it's almost got the like the sniper factor. Yeah. Mm. Right. Guess we'll have to see. Axe band. I don't get that one. Uh, nah. Just a uh, lane cutting. Uh, good start. May maybe the carry pick will explain all for. <laughs> okay. It's really adding up to that PL. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Axe is not PL. that popular right now. <laughs> we Slark? Saw I don't know. Hmm. Lifestealer? Oh, no, it's Slark. Slark. Okay. Actually, yeah. Okay. Right when Cameron well, there said you it, go. I was like, Gil, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it kind of makes sense. It, it's it's nice. I can see it as like an idea against the Wraith King. It's like you're just – any of these beefy heroes, they're just a bunch of – they're a lot of stacks. Um, you can pick off the Chen pretty easily. It's a potential – it's like a potential 1v5 hero, but I don't even know how good of a – Let's like go Mars. Are, are they just going to get run at? I think yeah, Mineski are just getting run so. at here. Like uh, yeah, we were we were casting that it? earlier best of 3. Max going to be running down lanes with exorcism like pre 10 minutes. Yeah. Th this guy isn't a 4040 zero, zero player on Death Prophet. He is a 3021 player. So I want to see uh like a Mars or something. Just get in there. It's a little bit weird because of the timber saw, mm -hmm. um, but centaur. Somebody just to hold them there. Centaur would be cool too. I'd love centaur. What about if they just went back for like a shaman too? Is that crazy? Oh, well, how about nature's yeah. prophet? Oh, he's banned. Good catch. Tide doom. Did you just good catch yourself? That was sick. I did. <laughs> 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 High five myself. <laughs> I love that. Um. Hmm. Or Beastmaster. That would yeah. be cool, too. Yeah, all right. They the just have a lot of master. options for whatever speed they want to play. Yeah. I like I like the Beastmaster. It's Razor. Razor. We talked about it earlier. Yeah, a little bit against? resistance, uh, or a little resistant to the Spirit Breaker. So it is the Boomy Puck. Okay. Why is there a Razor here? Is that good? It's just, is it, I think it's, it's just high tempo. It's just a 20-minute hero, I think. Yeah. That's that's all. doesn't sound fun for Slark to lane against. Or no. do they try and lane it uh, against the timber? Is that how's that match up? Nah. Then they aggro the slark. Yeah, Bokarino's playing it. I mean, I guess that just makes sense with the, huh. the lineup. Right. But three razor. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Let's huh. See. Hmm. What do you guys th think? Th these last two picks are off the wall, but yeah. The, yeah, the support puck does not fill me with confidence. If I'm being real here. Hmm. But it's so resistant to Spirit Breaker charges. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Yes. <laughs> it's sort of. Sounds like he's disagreeing with you, Base Kip. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's I, I, I'm. Th I think that there's a, there's a reason that we don't see position for Puck all the time, right? Because no one has innovated it yet. <laughs> no. Well, has, they've tried is, it. Is position for Puck the position for Invoker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. Even though Mineski uh, got me wrong in game one, I, I think I got to go on Mineski here. Okay, what is this Slark's lane? That is that's the game. If his if his lane is awful, which it kind of looks like it is, yeah, they might. Oh, just lose. look at that! E even is that even odds? Is that, uh, even was Stevens. it even? Dead even? even? One I think it was uh, one point eight three three for both teams. Yeah, that's, that's what it was even. last game. That's right? the even spread. Oh, well, wasn't it one point eight something against three point two? No, it was one. Well, the last time we had an even Stevens, it was one point eight three three, right? Yeah. When when uh, Maneski and Janesper uh, went to game two. In game two. Yeah. Yes, you guys mm. missed that. Okay, right. yeah, I'm going for. Uh, I'm actually going for a droid. Two zero. Uh, All right. Okay. We'll see it. Split panel. Thank you guys so much. No we'll problem. See you guys at the end. Banana split. <laughs> We're out of here. And let's go into the game. <laughs> Well, we're already starting off the game with a little bit of tips, it looks like, as Ninja Boogie uh, trying to instill confidence in the Nico baby after, I'm sure, what was a very frustrating loss. I mean, that's the thing, right? You're this anti-mage. You get an 11-minute battle fear. You feel like this game should be easy-peasy, and then things yep. just start falling apart around you. It, you got to pull yourself back up together. For sure. Uh, so Trent was talking about the importance of the – like whether or not the Slark has a game. I think this mid lane could also end up being uh, very impactful. I can see a world in which, like, I think Moon played the lane last game really well, but it doesn't really matter how well you play the lane against Alchemist. This matchup is maybe a little bit more snowball-y in the sense that if the Lina gets ahead by, like, a level or so, yeah. then the Death Prophet just can't ever come back into lane. Because your, your survivability is completely uh, dependent on your ability to stay at full HP and then like get a Spirit Siphon off once the Spirit Breaker charges you. But right. if you don't survive through the Charge Stun and then the Light Strike Array, then your lane is just over. Well, one of the big things I also want to watch for in this lane matchup is Moon got the chance, I, I imagine, that at least to see a, a little bit of what... Uh, Death Prophet was doing like this this bracer build right, mm -hmm. um, and then has an er, an answer now. Uh, that's what I want to watch is is what yeah. is Moon's answer, um, because the Death Prophet looked like he was really good. And the other thing that they're gonna have here is an ability to to recall that Death Prophet. Maybe even just like she pops exorcism mm -hmm. recalls, and then they're in the lane that much quicker than they oh were yeah. last time. That's true. Yeah, they're they're starting the lane swaps already. They were trying to swap uh, Timber away from the Razor, but they're just going to call the Wraith King top to keep pressuring the Slark. So yeah. looks like the matchups that Adroit want are the Wraith King pressuring Slark and the Razor versus the Timber. Okay. Timber still hasn't used his TP, though, so he can TP away from this Razor, but Slark is... Uh, Slark's also got his TP. So we might and have one more... We'll have it too, we might right? have one more round of swaps. Yeah. I mean, I think, though, that if they swap at this point, then there's just another TP, and it kind of doesn't end up mattering. But... Um, We'll see if it happens. But yeah, th this is, uh, you're going to get the lane matchup that you want. That's the power of Chen. Um, and we'll keep our eyes on this mid lane, see how it works. I, I think that the Razor versus Timber matchup is, is kind of annoying, um, particularly at the early levels, because you want to be getting those uh, points up and reactive. But if you do that, then obviously you're uh, not getting too many into chain, and well, you can potentially not break the link. Yeah, and you're, you're never pressuring, right? You're never, like, yeah. walking up and getting Whirling Death off and getting the potential for, uh, uh, for a kill. But it does seem like the lanes have maybe stabilized at least for a second. Divine Favor's coming back off cooldown in 15. Maybe they'll make it into swap. Boogie is behind the mid lane. Looking for something. I mean, they definitely see him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that they do. It looks like, yeah, he's just trying to, to make his way down here and get the charge off onto Boomy. Does have phase shift. Was that a recall interrupted? Am I crazy? Uh, it's on cooldown, so... Oh, no, no, he, but they brought the Razor Top. Okay. Yeah, no, rec recall brought Razor Top. Uh, they're just swapping again to keep trying to force these matchups if they want. Yeah. So, pretty even so far in this laning stage. Um, we'll have to see what the sort of regen situation is like. Keep our eyes on that. Uh, but at least so far, so good for Adroit. Lina is leading the CS, but everybody else is having a good time on the Dire. Yeah. Yeah, these laning matchups pretty good. Nicky Baby taking 
some pressure. All right, that time around, Boomy gets the finish shift. Natsumi there and now punching away onto Raging Potato with all of the right click damage and even that little creep right there. It's a little bit of a problem, but First Blood is going to go the other way as Boomy drops and they make the kill happen. Well done. But in the meantime, it's just a deny the neither creep. So yeah, Raging Potato is going to come back after 20 seconds. He survived on two health. That's kind of nuts. That <laughs> pretty gross. Boogie. Oh. And he's right. going to be ran down now, too. So they're trading hits. That's the nice part about this is really high base damage on the puck. Yeah, they've really buffed the puck to the point where he's a pretty, pretty fantastic laner. If he is level four now, actually able to start slapping back against Buckerino a little bit. Yeah. So it seems like Timber having an, an okay lane. And Nico Baby does have some CS. <laughs> pressure once again. Raging Potato just eating those Wraith Fire Blasts as well. Interesting skill build from the Wraith King. He's opted for an early point in the Vampiric Aura. I don't know if they just want to push the lane oh. or kill it mid. Nice play there with the Spirit Breaker to get the charge through and also going to be able to refill the bottle afterwards. So Moon going to have a nice time there. The 1v1 even up a little bit as the level 4s are being hit by both heroes. They might just be able to kill the Death Prophet again at level 6. Uh, once Lena has 6, that's going to be harsh. Boogie trying to come in from a charge, charge from behind here. It's only heading to the Wraith King though. In the meantime, Nico Baby is taking a lot of harassment there. If they turn to fight, get a couple more right clicks, Nico Baby might just go down alive on 60 HP. Ninja Boogie also taking some harassment. Switching over to the side, able to get that salve fully used. And Ninja Boogie, the bulldoze, as well as the walk away, keeps him fine and dandy. The pressure continuing to be mounted here on the Nico Baby. I mean, he's still getting CS, but he's being harassed. Five minute bounties. Ninja Boogie wants him. Oh, does he live through this? Afterwards, Bulldoze, walk away. But the puck, he TP'd in and finds the punch. No, he's not going to be able to Got do it. it. He gets okay. the kill. All right, all right. Still, though, super worth to get two bounties Yeah, for your life at that point. Moon up top going for Baccarino. Rotation makes it happen. Dragon Slave gets the kill. Well played. Moon making moves. All right, very nice use of the invis. So good rotation. Oh, and he's going to get the bottle refill as well off of Ninja Boogie. Nice. All right, that's so nice. They're keeping this Lena on the map constantly. That's what they need to make happen. Yeah, Slark can catch up later, but the Lena needs to have a good start. She's the, she's all the damage for the early game. They've got set up with the Spirit Breaker and the Rubik, but Lena is the one who's actually going to be killing anybody in these early stages. So very good game so far for them. But look at them just like tear down this tower. Like the Chen Creeps are just taking it, and they want to take away the Tier One tower super early. Yeah. Yeah, if they can take all those tier ones, then that, that catch-up zone for the Slark won't exist. He won't have the space in the jungle. I mean, Mac is two levels Going behind, but Potato he just again. hit level six. And yeah, Raging Potato silenced. They give him the clap, give him the punch. Boomy on a killing spree. Position for Puck, making it happen. And I mean, I, I don't know how you stop this. They're going to send in the tornado in a second. Boomy is just diving here. Does have the jaunt away afterwards. Not going to happen, though. Raging Potato manages to zap him down. Yeah, he can't uh, He can't phase while leashed, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So. So the pounce is actually very annoying for Puck. But the matchup kind of goes both ways a little bit. If you get a silence on the Slark when he doesn't have Dark packed up. Yeah. They're charging top Bakterino. Is harassing down Nico Baby a little bit, but he does have the ultimate, so they might be able to commit here. But there is some turnaround potential. Yep. Status resistance, quite nice, but can they get this kill on a Ninja Boogie? Looks like the answer is yes. And again, Nico Baby going to pop the ultimate this time. Bach walks away. Boomy looks like he's going to be fine too. So now the pressure's turned onto the tier one top as well. So no matter where they're going, um, and Eskier kind of just keep on getting ran at. Yep. If, uh, Mac has not skilled up the ulti just yet. He's actually floating two skill points. Okay. So, see what he does. They, they might be waiting for that move that you were talking about where they potentially TP in the Death Prophet and just instantly pop the Exorcism. Right. For now, he's just uh, actually maxing out the Crypt Swarm just to farm a little bit more. Okay. This, this started this game as we pretty slow. 
Charge up the top. Looking for Boomy. Doesn't get caught by the stun. Manages to jaunt oh. away. That's a big rotation. Moon missing on that one. Not able to find that kill he wanted. There is an arcane rune that pops up here in the top side as well. So Lena can save that one for a Laguna Blade play if she so desires. Death Prophet almost level 8. Taking that one point in silence, but still no ulti as of yet. And looks like KP is just going to walk away from them as well. But a lot of space given oh, to Boomy, Boomy here. Pounce the top, but Nico Baby actually the one perhaps in a little bit of danger. He's got wand charges. I guess it's just, just threatening. He is going straight up Midas, but only 300 gold worth of progress towards the recipe. So Timber denies the tower bottom. And they are playing consistently. Uh, sacking one hero and then giving Boomy a lot of farm. In this game, it looks like it's the Death Prophet. Oh, uh, okay, they, they kind of lifted Natsumi, but don't want to go for that kill. Box actually in here, pops the ulti, but also can't chase anything down. Lots of little pokes and prods, forcing TPs, forcing the rotations, but nobody hard committing to yeah. anything just yet. It's sort of a weird game in that way. Yeah, both position ones, like the Wraith King and the Slark, they're both going Midas, but they've both been slowed down by being stuck in tri lanes and stuff like that. And so overall pace of the game feels relatively slow. Like, highest level 8 by, oh, I guess leaden has got level 9 by 10 minutes. Yeah. But yeah, not, not a ton happening. I want to see this, the, the exorcism usage has not been there just yet. From no. From Mac, not not the same way that it was in in that other game. Though they had double save in that other game. In this game, they just have some bonus healing, and that's about it. This is a very uh, large move yet again, as they're going to bring all the Chen creeps up towards the top, trying to secure the bounty runes away. Dream Quail used onto the potato, pick up that bounty, kill him off, and now the charge coming through as well. That was actually a jaunt forward by Boomy. All the creeps are here, and he's taking a lot of harassment from Nico Baby. Pounce off cooldown in one. Moon shows up as well, wants to clear through these creeps. The chase forward, Nico Baby able to pounce out. And it looks like that's about it. Moon still chasing. Has the haste run. He's scaring them, but he doesn't have the mana to really do very much. Here. No, and is actually getting his damage drained as well. And the haste run is worn out. Nico Baby here as well. Charge coming through. They want to dive this one if they can. Stomp not going to connect. And that puts the end on it, it looks like. As Timbersaw runs forward. Bop. If they don't get any kills, this is hugely in Adroid's favor. Yeah. They just brought all of their cores top. We've got DP farming bottom, and Wraith King's been farming the jungle. Like, that last minute with no kills for Mineski, that, that's a lot of gold that they just gained on the Adroid side. And Maneski seemingly want to stick around here. They do send Nico elsewhere to continue farming towards his Midas. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to be successful in taking out this tier one tower. So the KP rotation ends up being almost a complete waste of time. Really rough. And in the meantime, Mac is playing catch up, right? Like yep. this is what this hero needs to do is be able to be a tank eventually. Going to TP away. TP's back all the way to base. That charge is not going to do anything. And they can recall him in with the Chen. Five man Dota time. Adroit, they got some items. Yeah. Moon's had two good rotations so far, but Lena unable to get too much more. Now just a Dream Quill straight up from Boomy. Oh my god, the silence. It's going to be brutal. Uh, KP needs to back the hell out of here. So they used the Glyph, but this is going to be the tier one tower going down, absolutely. And in the meantime, you know, Natsumi is still farming up. He's going to have his Midas done. Big plays. And, uh, okay, so Lena's almost got yields. That's another timing for Moon. It, it's really just about the four heroes that aren't Slark for Mineski. Both teams playing pretty similarly, right? They're waiting for their position one to farm Midas and to farm items. Everybody else is running around and trying to use their spells uh, the best they can, get down some nice wards. But I would say so far it does feel like a the Mineski a little bit more in control of the early game. They got some nice ganks on the Razor and the Death Prophet, but the last few minutes have been very nice for Adroit. Well, when you look at these like net worths and it look, okay, Radiant is up on top, but I'd say the big difference here is that they're playing with a position four puck who's actually halfway to Blink Dagger. Yep. 
Like that that is gonna be scary for them when that timing comes out and, and having, you know, Yules on a couple of different heroes that can't get bursted, most likely. We'll see how it goes. Maneski, right now, looking a little bit in the favor of the other direction oh. as they are end up losing the Spirit Breaker down bottom. Man, playing Spirit Breaker when you're not on the front foot feels so bad. <laughs> Just yeah. like if you, if you don't feel like you can set up anything for your team, then what can you really do? Everybody's the everybody that's not Nico needs to go maybe play around the Lena a little bit. Spirit Breaker is going to come out to charge that bottom wave, push it out. Uh, if they can find oh, Mac here, nice this game. would be big. But he walks away, and the silence is out. Is he actually trying to get aggressive on the backwards? Mac is crazy. This man knows no fear. Bottom lane, Ninja Boogie. Found, killed, and Nico Baby does find the leash there on the Bach. But Hand of God, TP away, no more pounce, and Bach is out. By the skin of his teeth. All right. Well, if they want to, they can. I think the divine favor is off cooldown. I oh, know. Ten seconds to go. Okay. Boomy silence continues to run, and you can see KP just wants to make something happen right now, but it's not happening. I mean, is, is how much pressure is there right now? Would you say on the side of Maneski to get things done, or, or do you think it's okay if if this game uh, sort of goes into a little bit of a stalemate for a little while. I don't think so. I think the Lena and the Timbersaw fall off later. Like, if the Lena or the Timber get caught by a Dream Coil or a Blink Stun or the Razor is just up in their face, I think both of those heroes just die. And that's that's extremely problematic if you're Mineski. What a great tip we have right here, by the way. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, there you go. If you want to see how to play Dota, check out these guys. Just buy a Bassy and a Smoke. Moon likes it. Bassy is an amazing item. You know what the the coolest play with Bassy is? What's that? You disassemble it, you buy a drum, and you buy an urn. Hey, look at that. It's value. You're playing like Bounty Hunter or something. You're going to buy a drum anyway. You might buy an urn. Value. Let's go for it. I like it. It, it, gives, you, it gives you eight damage. What an item. That is uh, that's a... That's a base kip tip. It's one of the few items... That well, like perseverance used to give you damage randomly out of nowhere. I think Bassy <laughs> is the, yeah. it's like the last item that gives you, just, so hey, have some free damage for yeah. building this item. It's the new perseverance, Odie Pixel. If you're listening, go buy it. So 15 minute bounty runes coming up now. Adroit, they're gonna try and secure themselves three of them. It looks like. Timbersaw throws out the chakram, but won't be able to get there quite in time. And looking quite good. Where do they go now, though? Like, is it just trying to try and run down tier one mid, or is it better to maybe pressure the jungle of the Moon. radiant a little bit? Moon, can you find it? Okay, just take the creeps. That sucks. What do you think? Oh, coil. Bach's up here, though. Wait a minute, Bach, he, he pulled him back in. Divine Favor making it work. Chase down. Ah, not going to be there for Moon. And instead, Raging Potato able to make the play. Keep his buddy survivable. Steals away some Plasma Field. And Maneski able to dodge that rotation. A little bit more farm time. But the net worth is still moving in a dire direction. They just, everybody, they, they got the full Tricor. Everybody's farming on the map. Death Prophet's catching back up. She's got her Yule Scepter now. She's still behind the Lina, but other than those two bottle. rotations, Lina's just been farming for the most part. Silence comes out. And right now, Boomy is level 10. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, he's, he's doing it. Tsumi pushes out the top wave as well. Already has some skeletons out on the map, getting him some extra farm while this is all going on. In the meantime, Exorcism was used mid. Yule Scepter. Secondary Yule Scepter coming out, though, from Bach. Make sure that he doesn't get hit by that Light Strike Ray. And the damage coming out into this tower. They're going to take Tier 1 mid. And meanwhile, the chase board for more. Moon again going to pop that coil, chasing him down. Does he get the body blocks out? Boomy makes it happen, but it's not quite good enough, I don't think, because this... 
Plasma Field. Let's not get used. And it looks like Adroit are just going to back out after the Exorcism. Charge. Onto the Chen. They take the Mud Golem. Can hurl the Boulder there to try and make a little bit of extra space. Nico Baby onto Bach. Tries to run away. Does have that Yule Scepter, but needs to wait till Nico Baby comes out to use it and turns it back around. Able to create that extra bit of space. Rage of Potato wants to get the kill, and he will claim it. So three go down. Maneski, some signs of life. That was just a really bad direction to disengage. I mean, th they chased Moon across. They got kind of baited. Yeah. Um, there was, that was a very, very difficult kill mm -hmm. on Melina without a like blink on the Wraith King or something. So, <laughs> Other, and that that's a hundred percent what costs them, right? Otherwise, there's no way for Slark to TP in. If right. they just if they just back up up the mid lane, then Slark can't come in and get any of that. But instead, they they lose three. So a bit of a misstep. Adroit, I feel like we've been hyping them up, but they are still making some little misplays here and there. But the Wraith King still farming away with his skeleton buddies. He's about a thousand gold away from his Radiance. Boomy wants to deny this top tower, but not before they actually TP in the Death Prophet. They're getting charged right now. They was they getting charged. It. Okay. But no longer. Oh, Boomy. Oh, no. That's not it. Range creep get that denied. Blink out. Oh, immediately coiled. Well played by Boomy, and they will find that kill. In the meantime, Bach goes down. So well played. Rage of Potato and KP work together to find that kill. And well, Spirit Breaker likes what he's seeing. So nicely done. And Maneski, for the past couple of minutes, making the moves they need to. You will Scepter lift up. Oh, or excuse me. Just a lift up by the Rubik. All right, that's, kill him off. That's, that's huge. That's Raging Potato finding, like, Setting up two kills for his core is very, very nice. And now Moon has himself a Shadow Blade, so he's going to continue trying to pressure and gank. This is going to make his life a little bit easier and in terms of finding these opportunities. Nico is going for an Esnoi this game. Going to tank up a little bit more, live through that initial burst, okay, and then just keep on getting the stacks. I I don't mind this. I mean, you look these past couple of minutes, Maneski have kind of turned it back around again. As the net worth lead now 2,000 into their favor, and more importantly, that experience really starting to balloon up. Nico Baby, left alone, gets himself that level 15 talent. And Adroit needing to find some answers. The game will swing back at the double BKB. Okay. Though. Like, Death Prophet and Razor both going for it, and Wraith King is about to start making some plays now that he has his Radiance online, so. This is oh, another charge broken there. And Ninja Boogie left up in the air. Looks like they're going to take him down here. Still did not connect on to uh, the other heroes, and Nico Babe was able to pick up the bounty room. All right, well, the, the, the droid are like, hey, we're, yeah. we're right outside Brosha. Look at all these summons and ghosts that we have. Spooky, spooky. And it's really hard to contest this right now. Although, Boomy did just show... They're coming over here. Well, this is dangerous. What kind Nico? of fight's going on simultaneously? They got the root on him. Uh, Nico, baby. All right, Midas is the creep. They find the catch, get the Aegis. It's on an Atsumi. They were able to take down that puck. But likewise, stomp. KP is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's time to stun. The stun goes out, but it's a little bit too late. That would have been a kill for sure if he got that center stomp properly. Because so I think he, he had two, actually. Yeah, a little bit of a miss micro. So Aegis. Claimed by the Wraith King, but they did lose the puck for it. And Natsumi, this has this guy has three lives. Did you really want to go on the Wraith King, guys? Yeah, Ask I don't yourself know about that. this question. Timber Saw does some damage. They throw the stun out on the Ninja Boogie, and he just drops it. Right, now going to lose the Timber Saw as well. KP goes down. All right, Moon's taking tier two. That's pretty good. He is he is quite farmed, and I was talking about him having issues with these get-up-in-your-face heroes, but he is going to have the BKB before too long. So just his his raw net worth is going to kind of get him out of a tricky situation in this Dude, game. They're rapping, though. No. They no, know. No TP for 17. That does so the stomp. Oh, the stomp. Give him the stomp to chase down. They get the kill. 60 seconds on the sideline for the Lena. Are they out of tips? <laughs> it might just be. <laughs> it might just be. I think, yeah. Okay. Silence there. 
Just going to clear out the creep wave. And again, the strength of Chen. 30 seconds, he can recall back that puck. Actually, yeah, the, the puck is so unique. Well, puck and Chen are so unique in terms of their ability to do this kind of lane clearing and influencing, right? Being able to send a hero to go and cut the wave almost completely risk free and then still being able to bring them back to the fight when necessary. Boomy can even just sit here, yeah. and he can keep threatening Nico to cancel his TP if he tries to go back while they high ground. I, mean, I don't think they're actually going to go high ground here. They've still got other items to farm, and right. uh, the double BKB timing isn't online just yet, which is what they're probably waiting for, but the the ability to get that uh, qualifier dream coil. Uh -oh. and TP in here. Box in trouble, though. Why is he here? Why is he on this hill? Yeah, that was, that was a little bit of a, a flub there. But Maneski take full advantage. They're able to find that charge vision and then afterwards punish him very heavily. So Maneski bind themselves a little bit more time. I mean, once you get this BKB online for Lina, can they start to fight at that point? Like, because it feels like with this Aegis, a droid can kind of just run down lane to lane to lane to lane. I think I think they need to wait out, but it's only another two minutes. Okay. For Aegis, they've almost got level 18 on the Slark and the Lina as well. So that's also a little bit of a. A boost really sucks for Adroit that it was the Razor who died because he's the one that they wanted to finish BKB on right. before doing, like, this This farming Aegis is supposed to be for the two BKBs and one of the people who supposed, the last person who's supposed to be farming their BKB just died. Right. So, uh, yeah, that, that really kind of offsets a lot of this Aegis timing. But Moon, I wonder if he'll go the, uh, the Fiery Soul stack talent. Just game. to be another he's got, four. He's, he's got a blight. Where's this? Is he gonna go for Deso? He's got a blight spell. Just casual. Oh my god, the dream coil though. The follow up is there. They got the long duration silence. The BKB is used, and in a second, Moon might be in some more trouble as they're trying to chase this guy down. BKB about to wear off. Seeing if he can hide off to the side, and well, he actually does it All over right. the trees. Very nice juke. Oh. Yeah, Wraith King's blink was gonna come back off cooldown. He couldn't just run. Yeah. So. Right. But you can see the issue as well, like, even with the BKB, right? Lena just gets jumped on, loses half of her HP, and then has to spend the rest of the fight running away. Things would be different if Timbersaw could actually stand strong on the front lines and give the fight the structure. Right. But without that, Lena just gets found every time in Adroit. All right, they don't have the BKB, but they're still willing to just try and force their way up onto the high ground. And Nico Baby is going to have to TP back now after the glyph was used in the top side and trying to bring down this Wraith King. He still has that Aegis. He still has Reincarnation. Jabuki tries to walk through all of them. So does KP. They're taking a lot of this physical damage out from the Exorcism. The stun goes out now onto the Lina as well. Four staff keeping her alive. That's fine, and Danny. Natsumi takes down the tower. Stunned again. That's going to be the Aegis. BKB pop from Mac. They want to try and take down a little bit more or just get out. All right, time to run. Dual Scepter, lift, turn, coil, connects, onto two. Not bad, but they're going to blow up the Raid King. No more Radiance in this fight. Boomy needs to get the heck out. The Stomp comes there, but they're still not killing him off. The regen coming, but it is going to be the Timbersaw going down. And now Ninja Boogie, after having bought back, wants to kill off this Death Prophet. The regen has expired, and so too has the DP. And it looks like they overstayed their welcome. Yeah, nice tier three, but I think they should have just ditched the Wraith King. Like. They they did get what they got the timber and they got the spirit breaker yeah. with that turnaround, but then they lost two more cores. So definitely not worth it. They probably would have lost at least one more person to like the spirit breaker chase or something like that. Just Slark Vision plus Spirit Breaker Chase. Oh good lift. Jay is on it. Oh man Bimbo making the things happen. Yeah. You can maybe just in the base. Alright. That's where the creep spawns, so that's where I'm going to be. And big swing back. This is going to be the tier two for sure. Losing the puck actually hurts so much. Yeah. They don't have the spam to be able to hold out the mid lane. I don't think they're going to go high ground, but just uh, losing control of the lane is going to take them a little bit longer to reset, get bottom lane pushed out, get mid lane pushed out. They've taken this tier three, but the real test now will be when can Adroit get back onto the other side of the map to take out the shrines and reestablish a little bit of control. And this part that we've talked about before as well is the Slark in this game. Oh my god, he's got 4.8k gold in yeah. his coffers. But also just the, the vision control that you're going to get because you were able to get back out on the map, find out where some wards are, and potentially take them out right now. Yep. Uh, Radiant, 
They have wards pretty much deep into the uh, dire jungle, and then these wards should be taken out really soon as well once the Slark gets back onto that side of the map. Lena is going for the, the right click build here. Oh, Heading Nico, towards baby. the Daedalus. Oh, they managed to interrupt the Divine Favor. Okay, and Wraith King. Oh, nice blink silence. Mac in the He's middle in of the everybody. Middle of all of them. Catches Rubik. If they can blow up the Rubik at the start of this, this is huge. But uh, Natsumi just goes down again. He didn't have his ulti back up. 30 seconds away. And that is really problematic. They need to back out of here very quickly. KP looking for the follow-up. Has the Yule Scepter out. Catches on the Bach. But it looks like that's going to be the end of the chase. It's a long rotation for Boomy to get here. He's not even going to come. He's just going to try and shove out mid lane a little bit. And it's really tough playing as the puck now. You have to be able to kill off the creeps without showing. Although the charge was already used, so he won't get caught out there. And the TP's coming over for him. He realizes Rubik is on his way. Meanwhile, go baby. Getting a little bit fresh in the jungle. Yep. It's a 4,000 gold lead from Ineski. All right. Yeah, the Sark is getting big. And once he gets PKB, they can do basically nothing about him. Yeah. The, the two silences were annoying for a little bit, but once that comes out, just be able to chew through the fights. Unfortunately, he hasn't got a single kill yet. He's 0-0-5. Uh, zero, zero He's just been farming the entire time. <laughs> is he not going to try and go for him, Boomy? It only lasts, it's 291. Not bad. Yeah, it's really good. Especially given that they've been getting pressured quite a bit. Yeah. I feel like a lot of other Slark players might have kind of crumbled under the pressure of that tri lane in particular. Uh, but he was able to make it out of there afterwards and just start running around the map and farming. Yeah, his team made a lot of space as well. Yep. well you know, you, you look at Boogie and he's got a ton of deaths, but some of them were, were scouting and pushing out lanes. Pushing out lanes to give you information. CML, okay, puts the center down and just about <laughs> face. Get me out. That's, that's Alina. Yeah. That's where I die. Yeah. Boomy, Spear Breaker, ships in the night. But there but is a ward down. You now. can see Adroit still haven't crossed back onto the, the dark and scary radiant side of the map. Oh, this poor skeleton's in a trap. No. <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, the problem of now playing against the Slark. Like the one vision that they have over here, it's kind of hard to make that move, especially when the Neski are playing up in your face. And if you separate too far, Slark will pick you off. Yeah. And you can kind of see why Death Prophet's going for the blink as well. They just want that little bit of extra catch. Right. They, they want to find this pick so that they can get back over there, take out the shrine, set up for Roshan number two, like get this game plan back on the rails, but. Maneski are not making it easy to cross the river. Oh, and Razor being jumped. Just sitting on top of a ward. It's taken out, and that's what happens if you leave your team for an instant. You get punished, particularly when they have that vision advantage. Just sitting on top of that ward. It should reveal that there's a ward there, and we'll see if Adroit are able to get that D ward going. When it, We always talk about it when a game swings back on Chen. It always swings back really hard. Right. Like you go from this point where you're super strong, your creeps are taking the buildings, you're looking good, your hand of God is doing enough to like keep your teammates alive through an extra couple of seconds. And then you go to the point where you don't have any creeps, there's no room on the map to rebuild your army, your creeps just die in a few hits, and your heal is uh, not enough to be significant in the face of like, Slark pumping auto attacks and Lina just right clicking. This could be the moment though. Forcing oh, a fight with the, the value backpack Blightstone. Yeah. I think they realize now what's happening. Maneski. I don't know. I, I feel like right now, if you're Maneski, you kind of just don't want to fight for a little while, right? Yeah, you can get another item on the Slark. Why not? Like, you're the ones in control of the map. This, this could even end up being a farming aid just a little bit. Okay. Get that tier two and then just farm out the farm out the dire side. Move your move your like ward radius in one step. Okay. And just kill them if they ever try and come out of the base with Spirit Breaker. And now Spirit Breaker for going from being on the back foot the whole game, doing nothing, and now they're on the front foot. Yeah. And Ninja Boogie's gotta be feeling amazing uh, about what he can accomplish from this point forward. So yeah, Chen going from 
hero to zero, spirit breaker, zero to hero. It's a big swing. It's happening. All right now. So yeah, KP. Almost level 20. How is this Rubik so farmed, man? Or is, or is it just that Baccarino is really poor? I, a little bit, little bit of A, a little bit of B. Yeah, I think also the like comeback that you sort of get when you're that far ahead, and then I don't think he had to buy back in the fight, if I'm not mistaken. He does have participation in uh, 14 out of the yeah. 17 kills that his team's got, so. and a lot of those kills were on the comeback. So yeah, he is also the. I mean, he is the position four. Right. In fairness, Spirit Breaker's playing five. Yeah. Oh, a bit of a battle, Bruin. Puck is not here, down on the bottom side, but they will find one. It's the Spirit Breaker. KP also there. Boomy shows up. They have the coil onto two, and KP silenced yet again. Lotus Orb is out to try and keep him alive, but it looks like it's to no avail as they will find that silence and kill. And okay. I mean, fighting into Aegis, what more could you ask for? They yeah. didn't even have to use Exorcism. Yeah. Nice, still a nice place to fight. Had the shrine as well. I think they were anticipating that that was about to be an all-out brawl, but just didn't really materialize. Mineski were elsewhere in the. Ooh, Moon. Down on Boomy. Face shift. Oh, not gonna happen. Moon gets the kill. Hand of God, not gonna save him there. Okay. Well, they got those kills, but they still haven't really moved out on the map. So we talked about Timbersaw uh, sort of falling off a little bit along with the Lena. Lena's I mean, fine. <laughs> Lena's, Lena's fine now. Lena's yeah. owning. <laughs> yeah. The, the, she the, did go the Fiery Soul per stack as well. Yeah. Lena's going. Well, Moon has just kept his farm up this whole game. Right. That is the most important thing. You don't you don't fall off if you just keep getting picked. Baccarino trying to do what, what the Puck did earlier. Uh -oh. Same fate. And Disarm trying to keep him alive. BKB Runaway. Raging Potatoes damage is not enough. And so, he's able to TP away. Do they realize it? <laughs> Just barely out of there. Nico Baby in the meantime goes pretty high up and hello. silenced. Has to force to eat the cheese. Well, that's not what you want. And now with DP Ags. Yeah, DP Ags is so ownage. Just. Just even the fact that it has the slow. Yeah. Like the slow and the heal, it's got kind of every little thing that Death, Pro uh, Death Prophet wants. It's like, oh, it does a little bit of extra damage? Great. Oh, it also heals me a little bit? Awesome. And it slows them even better. Uh, okay, so Cheese gets forced out. They have ages for another minute and 40. That was a smoke on top of a ward, and also Puck just completing Agnum Scepter. Oh, the Puck Ags is a big deal. We've seen Lena walking away from fights yeah. plenty. And Sark also needs to be careful. He has to make sure that he packs it off. Potato oh. dives in deep. In the middle of all of them. Puck Ags, it's there. It's caught in Moon in a little bit of trouble. He's going to throw out the ulti. Does manage to take down Bach. And now he's trying to stand tall in this engagement. He's walking away and is going to be able to get out of there. Not breaking the coil. Too much damage coming out from Nico, baby. Never mind. They weren't in trouble at all. They knew what they were doing. Good reaction, and well, Puck, phase shifting, trying to walk away, gets the blink out. With no DP for 60 and no Razor for 40, Mineski looking to take the first set of racks. Tier 3 tower already about to go down. This is, this is looking like Mineski's game to lose at this point. The Slark is just so big. Yeah. A little bit too tanky, few too many items. They've gotten all of the answers to the lockdown from Adroit as well, because a lot of it is soft lockdown. Oh, that's some hard lockdown. Yeah, that's the thing. There's like no way to break that coil either. On the side of Adroit. Yeah, no way to force it. Right. So Mineski just gonna take full two lanes. I think that Adroit could have won this, but they really lost a lot of momentum with Baccarino getting kicked off those couple of times before he got his BKB. And Moon does actually break the coil here, but he's still in this. And BKB, oh, good reaction with the Greaves out as well. That's Aegis expiring. Charge comes through, Bach gonna drop, and Moon back up to full HP and mana. Hand of God, not nearly enough. They go back in for another round, why don't you? 
was also a nice little coil stolen from the Rubik. Boomi tries to escape, and he will back away, but another lift from the potato. Jay has been owning. They're all over it right now, and well, it's a good amount of damage out as well. The DP tries to do what she can. No exorcism, but all of those little skellies, it's not looking like it's going to be enough. All right. Mineski, I guess they, they just swing bottom. Close it out. Nothing really that they can do. Exorcism is back up soon, but I don't see Mac 2v5ing this fight. He probably just gets chain stunned as soon as he comes back in. The, the Nether Strike is back on. They've got the burst for him. Atsumi jumps in, immediately gets pulled down, didn't get the blade mail off either, and is going to try and just walk at Moon. But GG is called, and it's going to game at number three, ladies and gentlemen. Maneski versus Adroit. And I, I honestly wouldn't want it any other way. I feel like yeah. both of these teams have looked solid. I'm All excited right. for it. I'm glad to see Maneski looking like they were on form. They had a pretty solid game. Moon, very impressive impressive farm this game, I think, and right. kind of the right item decisions as well. Uh, he was going for that Daedalus, then he went back for the Shivas. I think that was largely prompted by that one. He, like, he got the BKB, Ooh. and then he still lost half of his health Yeah. Um, in that next time he got jumped, but he just kept escaping, and all of that was just because he kept the farm up, and he had the items to respond to the timings from a droid. Like, if, at that point in the game, he only has a Yules and an Aether Lens or something if he was just mainlining the uh, the Spellcaster build. Right. I think they probably would have lost. But uh, Moon having a fantastic game. Nico Baby, I mean, 1-0 and 11. He did what he needed to do. He had <laughs> he had uh, almost as much damage as the Rubik. Hey, look at that. But he was, he was the insurance policy yeah. that game, 100%. Um, yeah. And Adroit, yeah, just too many little mistakes in trying to execute what was a very kind of dangerous timing push. This, they had, this there was like a 25-minute win. Like, how many other Lina's have we seen go Shadowblade and then just do nothing? This felt like yeah. it was Moon's game in a way. Like, yes, Adroit did overextend in that mid-push, and then they got punished super hard uh, those couple of times, but Moon also played his heart out. And I think that he's the type of player, too, that after a, a game like last game wants to go out there and have something to prove, yeah. too. I don't even feel like the Shadow Blade was... It, it got a few pickoffs, but right. to me it felt more like it was just the split push enabler. Yeah, right? exactly. He was like, oh, hey, these are Drake guys. They don't have a whole lot of lockdown. Mm -hmm. I can just buy time for my Slark by constantly running around and shoving lanes, Shadow Blading places, uh, putting pressure on them to to de-ward and to totally. just be afraid. Really good game for Moon. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for game at number two. Maneski able to take it over Adroit, uh, and as we see right there as well. We're going to go to a quick little break, but stay tuned. More to come here in the Southeast Asian playoffs uh, as it's just heating up. More action right around the corner. See you guys in a few.